Well, folks, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever part of the world you are watching from. Uh, this is Focus on Liberia, and my name is Jeremiah Moba. Uh, we are privileged to have us on our camera the executive director and founder of the Liberian Youth Orchestra, uh, Ms. Chris Julie Mangi. I uh, want to be talking about uh, a visit to Liberia and uh, we're going to talk about the prospects and challenges of uh, the Liberian Youth Orchestra. We want to talk briefly about uh, Monday's inauguration of Liberia's 25th president, Ambassador Joseph Wakai. They already got an invitation to perform at that uh, ceremony. Madam Mangi, we want to say welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I'm happy to be here with you. Good. How do you feel being back home? Liberia is, is your soccer home. Yes, it is. It's, it's wonderful to be reunited with all the students and we're excited to be here on this trip. Um, such an honor and privilege to be selected to perform uh, at the presidential inauguration. So, um, very excited to be here. Thank you. Okay, so for the sake of uh, our viewers, um, you're going to tell us what inspired you to establish the Librarian U Orchestra and what goals do you hope to achieve through this initiative? Sure. Sure. So, um, you know, I fell in love with Liberia, especially the children of Liberia, really on my very first trip to Liberia in 2013. Um, and I came several times. Uh, it was really my third trip that I brought a violin with me. And on that trip is when I realized, um, you know, there wasn't anything running in the country, such as an orchestra, which I'm very familiar with in the U.S. So. Um, I started playing my violin at some different schools and the children were very interested. So uh, I left that trip and I was just thinking, how is this possible to bring this to the country, the nation of Liberia, especially for the young people? And uh, it took me about a year to figure out some details and um, share the idea with uh, music stores and some other people to get funding. Um, donations of instruments all of our instruments are donated so you know there's a lot of support um, with the resources as far as the instruments go um, for the Liberian children and um, so we started the program in November of 2018 and um, so just over five years now and there's been some bumps in the road I had, yeah. can't Tell you yes, there haven't yes, some yes. major bumps in the road, but we're back together, and we our uh, our goals uh, to answer that question. The goal has been, remained the same. Um, the goal for Liberia Youth Orchestra really is to provide uh, hope and opportunity, uh, a way forward with dignity for uh, Liberian youth. Um, they take a lot of pride and confidence in being able to play these instruments. They're difficult instruments to play and they learn how to read music. And um, as you're seeing, we've been able to perform for some different yeah. important events, including the upcoming inauguration. So it's been, um, it, we've been able to meet the goals of you know, providing opportunities such as that. Certainly. So could, could you share you know, some of your highlights for the recent practices yeah, with your students since arriving in Liberia? Sure, um, I would say, I think a big highlight was yesterday. Yesterday, okay. So yesterday, we we have met several days now, but yesterday was great because uh, we had a time of like celebration and praise to God for all the good things that He's done for bringing us back together, for giving us these opportunities, and it was a really great moment. The students were singing, but also playing their instruments with the singing and using these skills that they've learned. So it was. Definitely a highlight. Good. So, how do you believe you know, music education positively you know, impacts the life of the youth in Liberia? So, there's several facets to this question. So, I'm just going to give you a few. But um, 
We've already seen in students, I've mentioned a few, you know, the confidence and then some different um, aspects, leadership skills, they're really building leadership skills. And then, um, you know, even academically, music is scientifically proven to um, improve grades. So a lot of students that are in the orchestra, when they started out in the orchestra, you know, as they continued, they were double promoting, so they were moving up grade levels. Yeah. Their reading improved. As I mentioned, they learn how to read music, but it also just helps, you know, with, with even academically learning things. So we've seen that. Um, it keeps children in school, gives them something to do, not getting in trouble, but to be doing something positive, learning a good skill. Um, the students have also actually been able to make some money doing this. So sometimes we get contacted to play in a wedding or a different event. And so it's just a, a way for students to be able to um, even start to make an income. And we've shared that with them. This can be a career. This can be something you can really work towards using. And I think in the days ahead, they're going to see even more of that. So. Wow, that's good. And uh, what challenges you know have you faced in setting up and running the orchestra in a new you know environment, and how have you overcome them? Uh, sure. So we recently had to move where we were. Um, we've had some major difficulties there. Uh, we did not receive all our instruments back. So the school we were at won't give us our instruments. So we only have the instruments that we have. Um, and that's been a real difficulty because you know there's more students that want to play, but right now they can't because we don't have access to those. The good news on that is that we have a shipping container coming with 67 more instruments. So wow. the Lord has provided for us and we are gonna start new students. So we'll be doing an enrollment uh, interview process here at YMCA. We're now at YMCA on Broad Street. And we have a room set up here. And we'll begin classes as soon as we get those new instruments. We will be doing interviews and receiving new students who um, can join the program as, as, long as, as, as well as these 20 students who are, will be performing you know, inauguration. Uh, we are going to be adding to that. So. So the, the, the instruments you know you play here uh, seem to be strange in our country, but uh, in what ways has the local community embraced your presence of the Liberian Youth Orchestra? What support have have you received you know, from the local community? Sure. Yeah. So I'll answer this in part, and then I'm going to also let my assistant director over here, McGill, yeah. he'll answer too from his perspective. But um, so at first it was a little. Like you said, it's a strange thing. It's new. People were unsure about this yeah. thing. You know, their student is coming and doing music for several hours instead of coming home or doing different things. So I think the, the thing that changed all of that for parents and people in the community is when they actually saw some opportunities come yeah. forward. Yeah. So we played in the Independence Day celebration back in 2019 in the stadium. And that really showed um, people like what can be done with it. So from that point forward, we've had a lot of support from the parents of the students. They enjoy having their children to be involved. And I would say um, we've picked up a lot of new support even uh, recently with different people in the community, um, Rotary even. Uh, had some meetings with Rotary. They love Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday was a really big one. So we yeah. connected with Yes Liberia. Um, they organized a Giving Tuesday collaboration with Smiling Faces uh, International and then Peace Jam and Liberia Youth Orchestra. We we're all part of that. And uh, it was a great initiative. We got to go all over Monrovia. The students would perform on top of the bus. Yes, Liberia has a beautiful bus that they're allowing us to also share, and um, it's called the Generosity Bus, yeah, the generosity and it's a beautiful bus. thing happening in Liberia. Yeah. So that's my perspective. So, Miguel, if you want to add anything from that, uh, yeah, I think we have 
we, we struggle from the beginning to get support from the parents or from the community. But one thing I understand, the, our support came from being consistent, doing one thing over and over. And the community saw how we put effort in doing it and how organized we've been over the past years. And that's why you see now a lot of people, older folks, want to be a part of this. Yeah. Okay. So, so some, some, somebody is asking, uh, will you be doing songs in, in the local languages in Liberia? Yes. Um, so we've, we've tried to do some. Mm -hmm. So, Miguel, you go ahead and speak Yeah, my, my, Miguel, you... <laughs> yeah, we want to do, we, so for us, like Junior and myself, we can do some in a local language, but if you want to do song like that, you need to come so they arrange it because we don't do music just off air. I mean, the air music. Okay. We do compose music, so it needs to be composed, and that's how we can be a part of it. But other than that, we don't have to be So we've done some arrangements, um, some Liberian um, traditional, like you know, national anthem. We'll be performing Lone Star Forever, which I think is a beloved song by yeah. Liberians. Uh, we did Liberia. Yeah. Um, Liberia by Myron Duakase. Yes. Okay. And um, we've done one that many churches do, Nara. Nara. So we have an arrangement of that. But we're we're open to more of that. But like Miguel said, um, that has to be brought to us, yeah. you know, so we can work on an arrangement of it. So talk, talk to us uh, briefly about recruitment processes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other parent you know interested yes. uh, they want their kids to be part of the program yeah. what are the processes yeah so one um, beautiful thing about this location what, what we really love is it, it's going to give access to more children from many schools okay so uh, we've always heard whenever we go somewhere people hear about it how do I get my child involved how do I get my student and uh, the distance was really far where we were. So this is a kind of a central location. So we're uh, we're hoping to be able to accept students from different schools. There will be, we'll put a call out when we're ready to start interviews. There's an interview process. We're serious about music here. So uh, all of these students know when you join Liberian Youth Orchestra, you don't join something else. So you can't be in a football team, you can't do a choir, you can't do, because when we're getting ready for events, we spend a lot of time working together. That's how we get to where we are. So we put everything into it so we can do it with excellence. So that's one of the criteria when we are doing interviews, we explain it really well so parents are aware also, there's a bit of a sacrifice on your part. Even though the program is free, we provide an instrument, we provide the training, but there's still sacrifice involved. Transportation, extra time. Yeah. Um, we need parents to support in those ways. This will be the second to the last question. Uh, could you share a memorable moment uh, or achievement with the students that stands out since you started working with them in, in Liberia? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> you talk about memories, right? Yeah. yeah memorable. So, like I was sharing with Pastor Day, we were looking at photo of us playing to the Providence Baptist Church, mm -hmm. but that was on a 200 years anniversary. So we celebrated with them, and we went to see where they celebrated or the sanity celebration. Yeah, that, that's a bad the Basitania. Yeah, right? that was the Basitania. We played there. We saw historical things, and we are happy to make another history come morning. Yeah. Wonderful. So, uh, what would be your uh, final word uh, to those and you know, viewing you and Liberians as well, uh, maybe who have interest they, they, sure. they, they, they got some support, uh, they, they want their kids you know, to be part of this you know, initiative. Yeah, so um, I just want to say we really value your support and encouragement for the youth of Liberia. This is a developmental program, so um, these kids are doing really, really well. And we do look forward to adding more students. Obviously, we can't add everybody at this point. But we need everyone in the country to get behind this and support it. Because 
if everybody in the country gets behind it, supports it, it can expand to more places and more children can be involved. But we can't just do it on our own. So we need librarians to also participate and help us support it. Okay. Yeah. Finally. Well, I want to say thank you all for following us and to see us come this far. One way or the other, I know you guys have been supporting us secretly. And we hope that you keep supporting us and do more.